Speaking of the worst of all worlds, Mitt Romney making a comeback in politics. For those of you who didn't know, Mitt Romney is running for the United States Senate in Utah. And this juicy headline from the Salt Lake Tribune, Utah Republican delegates force Mitt Romney into a primary election with state lawmaker Mike Kennedy in the race for the U.S. Senate. Now we're going to get kind of inside baseball here. After 11 hours of political elbowing and shoving at the Utah Republican Convention held appropriately at a hockey arena, delegates forced Mitt Romney into a primary election against state rep Mike Kennedy in the U.S. Senate race. In fact, Kennedy, a doctor and lawyer, finished in first place at the convention with 51% of the vote to Romney's 49%. The former GOP presidential nominee fell far short of the 60% needed to clinch the nomination outright. So just to be clear, you can deduce from this how the Republican and I assume Democrat uh, party nominating systems work in the state of Utah, which is that they have a, a weird split system. And this is a problem that the Libertarian Party is starting to run into in some states where they have ballot access and therefore have to have their candidates run in primary contests. But in the Libertarian parties where we maintain that control, we are grateful for the fact that we, the party, get to nominate our candidates at our conventions rather than uh, allowing it to be open to a government process by which you might have a crossover voting. Uh, you might have a Republican spoiler, for example, run against a libertarian and bring Republicans who are allowed to vote as registered Republicans in any primary they want into the libertarian primary in order to make sure that there is no real libertarian on the ballot and that what the voters are presented with is a mainstream Democrat, a mainstream Republican, and a Tea Party Republican posing as a libertarian, and they never get the libertarian message. In Utah, it appears they have a split system where if you go to the convention seeking the nomination and you get 60% of the vote there, they say that's a super majority and we're not going to have uh, a uh, we're not going to have a primary election. And then the candidate who is nominated gets to focus on the general election rather than focus on the primary. So this is good for the party if they're able to get that kind of consensus at the convention. And the assumption here was that our money, Mitt Romney, was gonna be able to come in and sweep this and take 60% and go on to the general. And as it said, Kennedy, the state lawmaker, a doctor and lawyer, actually beat him 51 to 49. So if that was the deciding contest, and if that is reflective of the general primary electorate in Utah, Mitt Romney and I will have something in common, having both lost Republican primaries. Freshman Representative John Curtis suffered the same fate as Romney, pushed into a primary against former state rep Chris Herod, an ultra-conservative who made his reputation on a tough anti-illegal immigration stance. But Curtis, who has been in office just five months after winning last year's special election, at least won 59% of the vote, just missing the 60% threshold. Senate race, Romney blamed a second place finish out of a dozen Republicans seeking the seat of retiring seven term Senator Orrin Hatch on delegates dislike of candidates like him who hedge their convention bids by also gathering signatures to ensure at least a place in the primary ballot. Romney collected more than 28,000 signatures and was the only Senate candidate to do so. So now Kennedy has to do the same thing, obviously. And this is really funny. Conservatives have for several years fought in court and in the legislature to overturn the state law allowing signature gathering seen as weakening the power of the convention and its delegates. And it's the thing is that this is something they actually just use to keep libertarians out of races, that they make it really hard. And, and I know uh, a number of people who are considering running for office this year who looked at the races and said, oh, this is great. I'd love to be the nominee for this race, but oh, I got to collect 10,000 signatures for a state reps race for a city council race, mm, that's, that's a bit of, that's a huge effort. It's a lot of money. Uh, you know, some, signature gathering pays from between two and $6 a signature. Uh, that's a lot. So you can imagine even on the lower end of that, if you were just paying for those signatures, that that would be $20,000 for 10,000 signatures, which is more than most libertarians can afford off the bat to just invest, throw into a race. Now you can organize a, a volunteer effort to do that as well, but it's still essentially that much money's worth of resources going into a campaign. 
Um, after, amid much reference to David versus Goliath, Romney joked, first, none of us is David. David was anointed of God. And secondly, I'm not Goliath. Washington, D.C. is the Goliath, which he vowed to battle. <laughs> yes, Mitt Romney. Yeah, sure, we're going to believe that Mitt Romney is not the, uh, the Goliath in this situation. Kennedy, who had handed out stress stones to delegates, dubbed them true, the true Davids and claimed for himself the role of the stone that they could use to bring down the giant of the Washington establishment. So, I'm, I, and this is funny because Romney is uh, obviously very Mormon, uh, but he's also very much a former Massachusetts governor. Um, Romney told delegates, you know me well and you know the things I stand for. I'm going to get things done for Utah. Right. That's why he lost, Mitt. I'm tired. According to Kennedy's quote, I'm tired. You know what? I'm really tired. I'm tired of business as usual in Washington, D.C. If you want things to change, you need to vote for change. Romney volunteers try to sway some last minute voters during the hours long convention by tossing water bottles and Twinkies to tired delegates sitting in the arena. In his speech to the convention, party chairman Rob Anderson called for an end to inviting. We are divided because we choose to be divided. We look at ways to tear each other down rather than ways to build each other up. Outside, though, posters lined the driveway leading into the event that mocked his leadership. Resign, Rob Anderson, read one. I'm tired of being robbed, said another. At the end of the convention, the American flag hanging behind the stage had sagged down on the right side. Oh, thank you, Salt Lake Tribune, for that beautiful bit of imagery. Uh, sag down on the right side. Is that, is that symbolic of the right of the party, the conservative sagging, or the, the right of the political bullshit left-right spectrum of the Republican Party itself sagging? Now, some would want us to, to say that this is the Ron Paul effect, but I haven't heard of any Ron Paulers active in the Republican Party for a long time. I think this is indicative of the deeper divide between conservatives and moderates within the Republican Party. And in the age of Trump, this is a very important uh, d divide to follow, to see how it relates and, and reacts to Trump's presidency when uh, Romney was originally a never-Trumper um, and many moderates were more against Trump and conservatives were more for Trump and yet Trump has governed so much more from the middle and betrayed so many uh, campaign promises in so many ways that it, it really is hard to say the effect that his presidency will have on that divide. But for those of us who as libertarians cheer for any weakness in the old parties, I think this is a good one for the future of the Republican Party that they are not going to be able to unite behind Donald Trump because of divides like this within the party. It gives me great hope for 2020, and it should give everyone great hope for the inevitable death of the duopoly. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.